Hey guys, this week we are going to be reading Children of Exile by Margaret Peterson. Now, I don't know about some of you, but I have read her books growing up. She's the same person who wrote Among the Hidden, which you may or may not have read before, or may or may not be reading this year, depending on your teacher. And it's really good. I Her books are very interesting. They're very, like, dystopian. Um, and this one is about... For the past 12 years, the Freds have raised Rosie and her younger brother Bobo and the other children of their town, saying it is too dangerous for them to stay with their parents. But now all the children are being sent back home. Since Rosie is the oldest, everyone's looking to her with questions she doesn't have the answers to. She'd always trusted the Freds completely, but now she's not so sure. And their home is nothing like she'd expected, like nothing the Freds had prepared them for. In the first book in a new series by New York Times bestselling author Margaret Peterson Haddix, Rosie must decide whether she's willing to risk what she's willing to risk to save her family, and maybe even all of humanity. So, sorry, there is on the cover, as you can see, there is like a big Haddix. I thought that that was part like her trademark, so on the PowerPoint slide, I only put Margaret Peterson, and I'm very sorry about that, but her name is Margaret Peterson Haddix, and it's like, I I always thought that the Haddix was like part of the series it was in, but anyway. Um, yeah, so mistake on my part, sorry about that, but let's get into the first chapter, and the thing cord is stuck, okay, sorry, <laughs> okay, let's get into it, ooh, sorry, okay. Okay, chapter one. We weren't orphans after all. That was the first surprise. The second was that we were going home. Home, my little brother Bobo sang as he jumped up and down on my bed, right after the Freds told us the news. Home, 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 home! I grabbed him mid-jump and teased. Silly, you've never even been there before. How do you know it's worth jumping on the bed for? I was born there, right? Bobo said. So I do know, Rosie. I remember. He blinked up at me, his long, dark eyelashes sweeping his cheeks like a pair of exquisite feathers. Bobo was five. He had curls that sprang out from his head like so many exclamation points, and his big eyes always seemed to glow. If he'd known how adorable he was, he would have been dangerous. But there was a rule in Fredtown that you couldn't tell little kids how cute they were. It was kind of hard to obey. How could you remember being such a tiny baby? I asked. You were only a few days old when you arrived in Fredtown. None of us were more than a few days old coming here. I tried to keep my voice light and teasing. I was twelve. I should have known better than to look at a five-year-old to answer my questions. But no one else had given me the answers I wanted, and sometimes Bobo heard things. Edwy says home is where we belong, Bobo said, stubbornly sticking out his lower lip. Edwy says we should have stayed there always. Oh, Edwy says, I teased, but it was hard to keep the edge out of my voice. Of course Edwy has an answer, I thought, even if he just made it up, even if he knows it's a lie. Edwy was twelve, like me. We were the oldest children in Fredtown. We were born on the same day, and we were the only ones who were moved to Fredtown on the very day of our birth, instead of waiting a day or two like everyone else. The Freds always told us it had been too dangerous for us to stay with our parents then. For the past twelve years, they said it was too dangerous for any of us children to go home. I was maybe three the first time I asked, but isn't it dangerous for our parents too? Why don't they come to Fredtown to be safe with us? The Freds always said, they are adults. You are children. Adults have to take care of themselves. It is our job to take care of you. I didn't think that counted as a real answer. That was why Edwy and I had decided when we were ten, back when we still talked to each other, that we were probably orphans and that the Freds just didn't want to make us sad by telling us that. We argued about this a little. I said surely the newest babies of Fredtown weren't orphans. Surely their parents were still alive. But there has there haven't been any new babies in my family since me, Edwy said fiercely. He always got fierce when the only other choice was sounding sad. And none in yours since Bobo. Once he said that, I could see lots of other evidence. If our parents were still alive, wouldn't they at least send us a letter every now and then? Then? Wouldn't they have done everything they possibly could to come get us? Didn't they know where we were? When I asked the Fred's questions like that, 
they patted me on the head and told me I was too young to understand. Or they talked about how life was made up of hard choices, and, as our guardians, they had chosen what was best for all of us children, and what was best for civilization itself. That way that Fred's talked was tricky. You had to wrap your rind around their words sometimes, and turn them inside out to try and figure out what they were really saying. The way Edwy talked was tricky, too. Rosie, Bobo said, squirming against my grip. I want to jump some more. If any of the Freds saw us, I would be in trouble. I was twelve, and Bobo was five. It was wrong for someone who was bigger and older and stronger to overpower someone smaller, smaller younger, and weaker. It was wrong to hold someone who didn't want to be held. Fine, I told Bobo, but mess up your own bed, not mine. I turned and deposited him on his own cot. I was tempted to tickle him, too, to try and bring back his glee and his ear-to-ear -ear grin, but the wor that would have required my asking him first. Is it all right if I tickle you? And I didn't have the patience for that just then. Bobo didn't spring instantly to his feet like he expected. I didn't go. He just sat in a heap on his own bed and asked, as if he'd just thought of a question. Rosie, is it safe to go home now? Why was it too dangerous before, but safe now? I ruffled his hair and made my voice as light and carefree as a summer breeze. You know things can change, you little apple dumpling, you. I said, using the baby name our Fred parents had given Bobo years ago. You know the Freds wouldn't send us home if it wasn't safe. I wasn't like Edwy. I didn't usually lie. Not on purpose. So why did I feel like I was lying to Bobo now? That's the end of the chapter, and as always, if you guys want to read this book, it will be in the library or the, the school library or the local library as soon as I get it back to your librarian. So, thank you for coming to First Chapter Fridays, although this is not the first of the First Chapter Fridays, and I hope you liked the reading, and I hope that you might pick up some of this book, some of these books that she's written. The other book among the hidden like that's a huge series they're like six or seven books in that series i believe it's about um it's about a society where you're only allowed to have two children every family is only allowed to have two children because the population gets too big and there are like there's like a group of third children who have to stay hidden and like or they get caught by the population police and they get killed and stuff and it's actually kind of really dark, but it's really good. And if you like stuff like that, um, like sort of dystopian-ish stuff, then I would recommend reading some more of her books. And there is also um, lots of other dystopian books that your librarian can point out to you at the library. So thank you and see you next week.